And I always ask uh, the audience, with, that with the exception of um, Sacco Julia and po possibly Polly Bemis, uh, can you name a single notable Idaho woman from before 1950? It's not because there weren't amazing women and with amazing stories in Idaho. Of course, it's because the history of Idaho is written by old white guys. So uh, one of the most influential women ever to have graced Idaho, her name was Mary Halleck Foote, arguably the most important writer of the American West, and she also was arguably the most important Western artist of the time. And uh, her husband, this guy named Arthur Foote, uh, was a, a dreamy-eyed engineer, with, lacking in business sense, but brilliant otherwise. And in the 1880s, he designed the entire uh, irrigation system that you see today in the, uh, in the Boise Valley, including uh, the design for a dam where Air Rock Dam is today. So she got, had her husband build her a uh, stone house at, at the foot of Air Rock, where Air Rock Dam is today. You can still see the ruins out there. Well, lovely Mary Halleck, she was born to ride and draw. A precocious Quaker girl, the city her delight. Arthur Foote was brilliant, mind would never rest. Until he crossed the Great Divide and engineered the West. Their union, though unlikely, ran nearly 60 years. A marriage filled with joy and hope, challenges and fears. Arth, Mary followed Arthur where his work would go. Leadville, Armadin, Mexico and Idaho. Now Arthur had a vision for the Snake River Plain, where the sagebrush are fertile, but there is no summer rain. He'd build dams and ditches for Boise River's flow. He would make the desert bloom way out in Idaho. From the Kuna Depot in 84, Mary saw the veil. Of the 12 years that would follow, little could she foretell. She'd live in Boise Canyon, the engineer's mate. Supporting Arthur's visions, ever troubled and ever great. You know, we were talking about uh, why I do these things. There's kind of an intellectual challenge here about telling a, a story in 150 words in three minutes. I mentioned that to a preacher one time that just about blew his mind. You have a few more than 150 words, don't you, to play with? That's what I've got. Well, Arthur built the stone house for his darling bride. Out at Lido Gulch, where the Boise rivers glide A place to sketch and write And watch their children grow Where the boulders rest beneath the cliffs At the angle of repose A wire bridge span the river Disaster with a fall, especially now Rattlesnakes and towering cliffs Threats to one and all where coyotes sang and eagles flew, flowering Mary's muse. <laughs> Wrote and sketched the West as could only one who knew. I don't do this song very often, so sorry about that. Now Mary missed the city, but the West she learned to love. Her fine arts and stories she created at Stone House. She sketched for Greenleaf Whittier, Longfellow and Tennyson. Her western books and stories were famed across the west. Mary bore a child there at Lido Gulch. A 
Cook and nurse and teacher gave her time to write and draw. The Boise social culture, why it wasn't her cup of tea. At Stonehouse she could entertain visiting a lead. Now straight across the drainage, Arthur's survey ran. With Tompkins and Wiley, they laid out the plan. Arthur left his vision for other men of will. And in 1916, the Boise ditches filled. The stone house was Mary's home for five eventual years. A refuge from her troubles and a refuge from her fears. The stone house has crumbled down, still the river flows. Past the broken rocks and broken dreams at the angle of repose. Now lovely Mary Halleck was born to write and draw. Arthur Foote was brilliant, meant to engineer the West. They left behind great footsteps here in Idaho. Mary's art and writing, Arthur's desert in full bloom. But now to Lytle's Gulch, hardly anybody goes. The stone house has crumbled down at the angle of repose. Thank you.